I remember being surrounded in a hallway uh, with a lot of men, and then I don't remember much else after that. I remember being given um, something to drink. It was it was sweet. Um, I'm assuming it may have been some alcohol sweetened up in Kool-Aid or something that I would drink. I was probably, um, I, my guess is three. At that tender age, Marilyn Williams didn't know it was wrong, but she knew how she felt. And I can't remember everything, but the feelings I have when I remember that are terror. The group stopped molesting her when she was still quite young, but Marilyn's father continued to sexually abuse her for years. I remember wearing many pajamas to bed, layers and layers and layers um, a as an adolescent, uh, trying to uh, do what I could to keep it from happening. Um, as a young child, I think I have some snapshots of me sleeping in corners of rooms, thinking that maybe the bed just wasn't safe. If I slept in a, on the floor in a corner, that would be better. When Marilyn was a teenager, the abuse increased. I remember uh, coming home from school pretty much every day in junior high um, and knowing that my father was waiting for me, uh, laying there, usually naked, usually on the bed or on a couch, waiting for me to come home. He was usually drunk by the time I was home. Marilyn finally confided in a favorite teacher. Thinking that she would keep my secret. And, um, and of course the next day uh, I came to school and the police were there. You're under arrest. And my father uh, was arrested that same morning. And I'll never forget just how uh, ashamed I felt to bring this shame upon my family. Marilyn was taken to a children's home for a time, but the reprieve didn't last long. After some mandatory counseling by the social agency, both father and daughter were returned home. My dad hadn't changed at all, so I had to literally fight him off pretty much every day from ages 13 to 18. In her own fearful, vague way, Marilyn tried to let her mom know. Uh, she thought my dad had really changed, and so I didn't fully tell her. I may have tried to drop hints, but she thought we were doing well, and she thought everything was fine. Um, I knew that if I turned my father in again, he would most likely go to prison, and I would go into the foster care system. And I was in high school, and uh, that was my life. The teachers, uh, my schooling, uh, my extracurricular activities, that was my support system, and so I didn't want to lose that. Marilyn knew Mike truly loved her, and they married. She was finally free from abuse. She'd even been honest with him about her past, up to a point. You know, I said to him something like, I come from uh, uh, some form of abuse, have some incest in my background from my father, but I said, I want you to know it hasn't affected me whatsoever, and that I'm perfectly fine. And so, but of know, course, she fine. wasn't fine. I was struggling with depression, mm -hmm. didn't quite understand why. Why am I depressed when I have this beautiful home that I've never, you know, had before in that sense and, and uh, uh, had two, you know, two beautiful children. Um, I started struggling with panic attacks and anxiety attacks. I began to experience flashbacks of the abuse that I had, you know, stuffed down, way down from when I was a little girl. It was, it was severe. I would uh, lose uh, the ability to discern past and present. Mike remained loving and supportive throughout it all. There were some days where um, he would come home and I might not recognize him. I might feel like I was four or two or six or seven. Uh, I was very confused, very disoriented many days. So he would talk to me and tell me that I was safe here, that nobody was going to hurt me. And that's when I was diagnosed with multiple personality disorder. Um, they don't call it that anymore. Um, they call it dissociative disorder. And then I was, was frightened. I didn't know how my husband would take this. Didn't know what this meant about my future. What it meant was Marilyn suffering for nine years with sporadic flashbacks so severe that she took on other personalities to cope. After many years of hard work, light appeared at the end of the tunnel. And, and finally, I, I kind of got to this point in my healing journey, so to speak, that I was really ready to let it go. And you know you're ready when you really don't care who did what to you anymore. You just want a life outside of it. And one of the first things that he called me to was forgiveness. First, her mother. I started feeling this love for my mom that I just didn't even know that I really had. And then the tough one, her dad. I wrote my father a letter and there was no response. 
and he's been in hiding ever since. Nobody really knows where he is. And so he was never willing and open to face his uh, actions and never interested in reconciliation with me. Um, but I felt a peace because the forgiveness in my heart towards him. It's been 10 years now that Marilyn has been free of the mental torment of sexual abuse. She and Mike have been married 25 years and have two grown children and a grandson they adore.